For some, the Altissima range comes naturally, but for others it takes a lot of hard work. So what do we do about it? Let me show you. Hey everybody, it's your friendly neighborhood saxman Alex here. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. Just hit the button and click the notification bell and you'll be up to date on everything from your friendly neighborhood saxman Alex. The Altissima range is a very hard range to master, but for some it comes naturally and I was not one of them. I remember in high school one of my friends, his name was Alex Lacey, had an amazing ability to go into the Altissima range. I think his range was like a high G above the one Altissimo G, which is incredible. But for me it took me, I'd say a year and a half to finally break through that glass ceiling of Altissimo. It was a great feeling to finally be able to play Altissimo, but it didn't come easy and I was never consistent. A lot of my teachers told me to do X amount of exercises or X amount of scales using the full range, but I didn't really grasp what it really was to master the Altissimo range on your saxophone. So here are some tips. The number one thing that you should realize about the Altissimo range on your saxophone is that it's not a different range. It's just a part of the range of the saxophone as a whole. I know a lot of teachers mention the lower register, the middle register, the high register, and then the altissimo. Although this may be true, you should treat the altissimo as just an extension of that range. If you treat it as two separate ranges, you'll play as if the altissimo range is X range and your mid range is another range and then it'll show that you don't have the capability to flow from one to the other. The next thing you should do especially for those jazz musicians out there is to try to play lines up in that register. I would suggest having a range just below the altissimo range so high palm key D to high palm key F so that you can transition between this high register range to the altissimo range. I recently have been taking lessons with Baptiste Elbe and Melissa Aldana, and they've both suggested that I do this specific process of playing phrases and playing licks, flowing from your normal register into the altissimo so that the flow and the transition becomes more clear. And the most important thing is that altissimo notes have multiple fingerings. An altissimo G has, I believe, about three fingerings. <laughs> And it's very important to understand the functionality of all three of those. One of them is because it's easier to chromatically go up to G, while the other is it's better, more in tune version of that G. So it's very important that you understand that there are different fingerings for each note, and each of those fingerings have a benefit that will help you in the long run when choosing on the spot or whether you're improvising. So I'm gonna show you how to practice these three methods. So sit back, relax, and I'll see you in a bit. Warning. High-pitched sax noise up ahead. If you don't want to piss off the person next to you, lower the volume. Thank you. Booba bop do 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 da bap hoo bop shabamic look him up. I hope you enjoyed these demonstrations and I know there are so much more methods to helping you play the altissimo range and mastering that very difficult range. So leave a comment down below and let me know how you practice the altissimo range. Thank you for watching the video and as always don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram and TikTok for all your latest sax head tips. Stay sexy! Hit that button and notification bell so you Relaja algodón. Altísimo range, it is... Blah.